For all those who appreciate the work that we're doing here on Standing for Truth, please hit that subscribe button because we are just getting started. Here's another prediction that we can make that anybody can test. We predict based on the creation model that creatures, animals, they will self-adjust to changing environments by the same engineering principles as human design adaptability. Because if we're made in God's image, we can get an idea for the way God created us by the way we create, whether it's modes of transportation, just human designed ad adaptability mechanisms. And we've actually seen this. Are you familiar with epigenetic markers? and the changes that we're seeing based on these epigenetic tags. Yep, and those have absolutely no corollary to human design at all. Those are purely random natural processes. There's no, absolutely nothing design related to them. No, actually it's not because you can even look at something as simple as diet, which alters our teeth, swimming alters our spleen size, high altitude alters our chromosomes. These changes we're seeing based on our epigenome, they're not random, that's the point. They're non-random adaptive changes that are perfectly consistent with the prediction that I just gave you in regards to animal kinds adjusting to environments based on the same engineering principles as human design adaptability. Based, Look at right, cars. There, right there, that part you said based on human design similar to engineering, that doesn't happen. <laughs> human design engineering is based off of an intellectual design of where you think of something and then you put it into action that doesn't exist in biology anywhere. There is no corollary to biology anywhere to that. There's no similarity to engineering and human design to anything in biology. There's no of connection. course, we can, we can see specific fish that enter cold climates and all of a sudden they adapt right away. This is exactly- what That has nothing to do with human engineering. Engineering is we think about stuff, we design a change. Biology is changes happen in the genes. There's no thinking. Right, but there's no we're predicting design. that these we predicted that these changes are based on adaptive mechanisms. Human engineering, for example, look at cars these days. They're engineered with built-in adaptive safety mechanisms that turn on based on the environments around you. And this is exactly what we see in the adaptations observed in animals today. For example, Aaron Ra, he will cite five or six examples of beneficial mutations, we now know that those so-called beneficial mutations are not even mutations at all. They're based on epigenetics. And are right, these epigenetic markers, they act to control and regulate the activity of our genes, right? So they're influencing our physical appearance in the, the same way our genes do, but they're no, there's no change Tom, to the underlying genetic code. The perfectly consistent affirming, with our prediction. The consequence. Okay, so you're affirming the consequent. You're saying that there are adaptive mechanisms in genes, therefore it's like human adaptive mechanisms. So the fact that we have adaptive mechanisms in engineering does not mean it is a feature of human engineering. It means it's a feature of biology that we copy. So you're affirming the consequent. That is not saying they're the same or that they're both from some kind of designer. That's not evidence at all. And we do predict that in evolution. It's purely predicted by evolution all the time. So no, no, the, no. that's why evolutionists are always shocked when they discover that a lot no, of these so-called mutations are actually they're just not based on epigenetic tags. They're not. Oh, no, no, they they're are not. shocked. You can see how no. shocked they're. Look, they're look like, at these. In, wait, wait, I don't want to ask you a question. Are you saying that they weren't shocked when they realized and discovered that these endogenous retroviruses have very, very significant functions? No, they weren't shocked. That's just something creationist nonsense say. Oh, idiot. No, 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 they've actually like, stated. Oh my God, this can't be explained by evolution. That's not a thing. That is not a oh, thing in biology. Oh, of course, of course they're going to have. No, these endogenous retroviruses, they've always stated, should be non-functional evolutionary leftovers. They're based on no retroviral infections. No in one said that. <laughs>
history. Now we know that they have crucial functions that help. Let me finish my sentence, please, because then I lose my train of thought when you're interrupting all the time. They help regulate genes and even determine cell types. No. Now, evolutionists, yes, they've had post hoc, ad hoc rescue devices. For example, they'll say, oh, no, these endogenous retroviruses have been co-opted. But that's just uninformative gloss. It's post hoc, ad hoc. No, that's, that's right. wrong. <laughs> Again, oh, that was already predicted. So. One that was already Just predicted. to be sure that Sandy for Truth had a chance to finish that thought, you got yeah, no, I'm, I'm just saying that these these endogenous retroviruses, they act to distribute regulatory information. They confer genes with new patterns of expression and function. They're important in the placenta, the embryo. Evolution has never predicted this. That's why they've had a it rescue is, device of co-option. That's not true. Again, so I want to see none a of the technical data helps you. None of the technical data helps you. The more stuff you say about technical data, just all stuff that proves you wrong. So just like people said, oh, no, the gene heads, like, what was it, the the... Encode project, which said that there is no function. Oh, evolution uh, predicted there would be no function, but there's functions. The exact same kind of nonsense. No, no, no it's not, it's not nonsense because, okay, I, I, want, I want to ask you, no, Tom, I want to ask you a specific question so we can have a head to head prediction and a head to head um, testing of, of our models. How much of our genome, the entire genome, non coding and protein coding, whether it's function and expression, whether it's function in the embryo, how much on a percentage wise do you think or predict is functional? Why, why are you asking me? Ask it a biologist. I have asked a biologist. I have asked many biologists and scientists and they all say it has to be under 20%, non-coding and coding. We've predicted based on the created heterozygosity hypothesis that the majority, over 85% of our genome, non-coding and coding, has some type of function and purpose. I understand evolutionists have said there's some function in the non-coding regions, some, but no more than 20%. That is literally, we can and do a right. head to head comparison of right. these models. Over 80%, less than 20%. Those are total opposite predictions, Tom. Yes. Yep, they are. And the evolutionists were correct. The creationism was no, wrong. No, the evolutionists have been wrong. They're wrong more and more every single day. Endogenous yeah, this is, retrovirus. This is, why, this is why you don't understand, no, no, because you're conflating different definitions vital. of function. Nope. So, again, you're proven wrong. Proven wrong again, because you're conflating different definitions of function. This is why no, you're No, no, no. No, no, I'm not conflating. There's non-coding DNA, and then there's protein coding. Yes, the evolutionist has said that there's there might be some... Some Again, functions this, the non-coding This debate has been answered. This Some. debate is over. the vast majority. Standing, standing. All of the technical data proves you wrong. All of the technical stuff has been answered by biologists over and over and over again. The ones that make predictions are the evolutionists. If you want to make a prediction about all the technical stuff, go bother PZ Myers and go make it. Go publish papers. <laughs> so my point is that none of the creationist models can be peer reviewed. You can't find a consistent system in any kind of creationist model that can be used to make new predictions. It's just this like why, shaking a magic no, Tom, robot. I don't want you just wait. I don't want you to slap around. This is why you never answer my question. The, our last debate was six months ago, and you still don't have an answer to how much of our genome, non-coding and protein coding combined, is functional. You always say, "Oh, the evolution has never said that all I the non-coding." Biology. I've never I said that. I don't even care. Biologists I say less than twenty percent is functional. And they I'm are wrong. Go with the we have biochemical decision. evidence that over eighty percent of it is functional, but that's biochemical. No, no. the Encode project was proven false. Okay, so the Encode how, project was proven false. All of those no, were proven no. false. There's a reason it, it evolutionists have, are, reject are you that. Me? No. <laughs> how many gene knockout experiments have been performed on humans and mammals? Again, again any technical data. There you go. That is premature the, to say that the majority of our genome is non-functional. None of the technical data helps you at all. None of of course. Of, are you kidding me? Of course it is. All of this data, data that's coming out is in technical journals. And even evolutionists are admitting, oh, wow, the genome is a lot more functional than we've ever thought. Creationism. So again, you want to take up those things, go write a creationist model that can be used to make peer-reviewed predictions, put it through the peer-reviewed process, demonstrate it can, that's evidence. Until you can do that, you got nothing. No, no, no. We've already made the prediction that God is it not going to produce Adam and Eve adults without any pre-existing DNA differences. Therefore, we've made a prediction that the vast majority of our genome is functional. And this is exactly what we are seeing more and more oh, every day. Nothing. 
You've got nothing. Again, no, no, none of that has ever gotten through the All you, have, all you have, Tom, is assertions. You won't even answer my question on how much of the genome is functional because you know if you give the I wrong answer. I don't need answer, to. Not a biologist. Again, I'm creation. not a biologist. So stop asking me about technical biology questions. Go ask a biologist. What we will do you is. You want to know a specific prediction, though. And I'm trying to give you no, a specific no, no, no. prediction. That I don't we want a have. prediction. I want an atheist to read the creationist model and to make a prediction. At, th at this point, you keep, I've given you retro dictions, post dictions, not evidence, testable not evidence, predictions, future not testable evidence, predictions that have been confirmed. You have an impossible criteria because you are holding nope. to your basic worldview. No, no, this is not an evolution of uniformitarianism. No. Yes, this is a you fact. I'm not a geneticist. Biologists I say I'm less than I'm also not a geneticist. And why, why are you asking me? Asking a biologist. A, from my field. Because again, I'm not a geneticist. Genetics is not my forefront. Because I'm not a geneticist. Again, not a geneticist. And I'm not a geneticist. I'm not a biochemist. I'm not a geneticist. I got my notes right here because I don't know enough about genetics. I don't know about because this isn't my field. But genetics really isn't kind of my field. I'm not a geneticist. Not a biologist. How do you explain the massive dissimilarity between human and chimpanzee Y chromosome? And then we'll, we'll run with this. Go ahead, Todd. If you want to answer that question, go ahead. All right. Well, if I get three minutes here, first of all, I'll say that uh, I'm not falling for that trap. <laughs> Why is there so few mutations on this phylogenetic tree? Okay. Well, sorry, I'm not going to fall for that one. <laughs> Why is there such low variation in mitochondrial DNA, low genetic diversity in humans? Why I'm not going to fall for this trap.